Ahoy there, and welcome. I know you must have some interest in Albin 28s. I hope this short video will help answer two questions. Why should you buy this Albin 28, and why in the world would you want to buy an Albin 28 in Panama? Well, first of all, as beautiful as she is, don't buy her for her good looks. Buy her for her performance. She's a fishing machine. She and I have fished through five countries together these past 12 years. She and I have traveled from Boston to the Florida Keys, throughout the Bahamas, to Cuba, to Costa Rica, and for the past six years, we fish Panama. And we go way offshore, in all kinds of weather, day and night, safe, stable, and fuel efficient. You already know what an Alban 28 is, but now you can see it. Let's take a look at how this one became a fishing machine. Let's watch her working in her own element, doing what she was really built to do. Well, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. We've been busy. Um, we already have caught six uh, bonito. The bonito in these tubes here. See, I got two big tubes and four small tubes on the back of the boat. And you can see the water pouring out of these four. I only got a fish in these four right now. Tuna are great bait. Maybe the best bait. Of course, the problem is keeping them alive, and the key to, is to provide enough water. We have two pumps for our tubes. Each one delivers 3,600 gallons per hour. The tuna are put head down into the tubes, and we force a lot of water into their mouth and through their gills. If you haven't used tuna tubes, you'll probably want to rush out and buy some right after you see this video. <laughs> There's no better bait than tuna. All species of game fish relish a small tuna. Even tuna eat tuna, marlin eat tuna, big snappers eat tuna, we catch jacks, grouper, dorado, wahoo, they all love tuna. And the bait really can't be too big. We use bonito and skipjack and small yellowfin tuna all the way up to 15 pounds. If we had bigger tubes, we'd use bigger bait. Now go get us a marlin. Right now we've got uh three lines out. We got one here in the outrigger and we got another one short and then we got a third line with a bonito a key in, in the outrigger also. We just missed a sailfish. Well, this is a view of the boat from the stern, which I don't normally get. But it's really calm today. We're hoping for big things. We're hoping for a marlin right now and then a little later this morning we're hoping for some tuna. We have good bait and we're hoping for tuna. Okay, somebody just struck this um, bonito, one of the long ones. Off the, off the, and we're running line up right now. You can see him jumping right out. He's hooked. He's hooked. We fish in the Bay of Chiriqui here in Panama, uh, normally about 50 miles offshore. Some people call this area Jurassic Park. <laughs> the reason is you can catch trophy fish here of almost any species. And who doesn't dream of catching a big fish? Even my wife is no exception. That's a 240 pound elephant she caught on a bonito. And we catch big marlin here. 400 to 500 pounds is just normal. 600 to 700 pounds is very common. And we all hook some granders. Few of us get them to the boat, but we all hook them. <laughs> One of our opportunities fought for eight hours and 45 minutes until it finally broke the line. It wasn't tired, but we were. <laughs> Sadly, a few have died in the contest, and the only consolation is they are delicious. Trolling. It's been a little tough today. We, we caught bait last night but didn't leave early because it was rough out here. We started fishing. Uh, we came out to start fishing about 2 in the morning. We got out here about 4 started fishing. It's poured rain all day. We got about 5 Fargo 20 pounders. We got some blue, blue jacks, about 20 pounders. We just caught a we're trolling on eight lures right now. We're trolling eight lures right now. We just got a wow. But where we wanted to go was directly into these waves, and we we wouldn't have good protection tonight. We're a little bit afraid of if this gets much stronger. We have a pretty bad night. We're not afraid of sinking or anything. It's just uncomfortable as hell to go against these waves. They're really square. I've now I got the camera out, I'm not seeing one of the really square ones. There's one building up behind us, you can see that on that shit. 
So we had one break right on our stern here a minute ago. Down there. So we've turned around and we're headed back to Parida and I think we're probably going to be heading in tonight at some point when it's safe. Ooh, there's a big one. Maybe you read about the Albin 28's famous ability to, to track straight, even in a seaway. It's all true. Plus, the low center of gravity causes the boat to roll less. So we can run on the autopilot 99% of the time, even in following seas like this. You can clearly see that this boat is as stable, perhaps more stable, than 60 footers you've been on. Our trips are three days and two nights. We stay offshore 50 miles. And most nights we drift in open ocean, safe and dry. When this boat was new, the idea of fuel efficiency wasn't all that cool. But how the world's changed. At trolling speed, we average 3.5 miles per gallon. That's not gallons per mile, it's miles per gallon. <laughs> so on a three-day trip, we'll consume 50 to 60 gallons. 50 to 60 gallons for the whole trip. And on top of that, we're weighted down. We carry 1,000 pounds of ice, plus two small freezers, three people, all our gear. And sometimes on a really long trip, if we go out further, we'll even carry extra barrels of fuel. Well, it's a little slow right now, so I thought I'd take a few minutes to show you how we operate the boat. I know we've talked about these tuna tubes before. We don't have any um, Bonito right now, so there's no water coming out of them. But the tank right here does have live bait in it. We are feeding water to it. This tank in the middle here is our biggest cooler. That's about 300 quarts. And that's where the fish usually go first. And if, when that's full, then we store them in these, one of these two coolers here inside, or up in one of the two freezers in the front of the fillet. I've got a lot of room for rods and reels on this boat. It's gonna be shot up. We've got an outrigger. Well, we got two outriggers, one on each side, of course. Um, so we run two lines off of each outrigger. And up above, I've got storage uh, for three rods and reels on each side. So those will be those we usually use for live bait up there, and we're not using any live bait right now. Then down here, I made myself storage for uh, 10 more reels and rods on the sides of this uh, engine cover. Right now we're trolling eight rods. There's two in the outrigger, one opposed, there's another one, and then on this other side, we've got four more. Two in the outriggers and two running shorter. Underneath here I've got storage for our gaps. We keep, we keep gaps on both sides of the boat so we got them handy. I got identical uh, gap. Uh, I think you can see we've got four, five, six, seven rod holders on each side. And I've got uh, four here across the stern. Most of the time we will run flat lines off these fleets. But right now we're running uh, eight 11 inch mold traps. This is late afternoon. And the, Dorado, the only thing that's been hitting lately is Dorado, and they've all been hitting on the 11-inch pink mold trap, so we changed it over all the pink mold trap for right now. Running eight lures is easy. Running nine lures actually is easy on this boat. Two in each outrigger, and then when I installed this rod holder, this rod holder is really meant, this is a swivel rod holder, Swivels. This was really meant to fish more, this was mostly been for bottom fishing, but what we found out quickly was we can put a rod in here at an angle. Let's see if the other one shows up better. Yeah, because of the angle, it, it, it sticks out past the other rod. I'll show you from this side now. You can see we get about a two foot or three foot spread because of the way that rod is positioned. So quite often we'll run these eight, and then I'll run another one where that reel is right now, we'll run the ninth. We don't have any teasers in the water right now. I usually don't use them for Dorado, but we usually have either one or two teasers in the water also. And that's why when we get a fish on, especially Dorado, they move back and forth behind the boat a lot. We need a lot of people on the boat um, just to get all this equipment in quickly. We've got some Dorado. There's been sailfish in the area. We've got a lot of good bait. We've got goggle eye. We've got, uh, 
we got um, Bonito this morning. You can't see anything on the horizon, but here on the radar, I hope it'll be hard to make this out. I got this set at three miles. Let me set it down to one and a half miles. You can see up here on top. You can see that up on top. There's lots of birds there, and then over here. We haven't seen them yet. But we can see them on the radar, so we're headed there. Today, as you can see on the sea, it's a real calm day. So we can set the gain up on the radar to where uh, we can pick up one bird three miles away. But this this looks real encouraging off to our right here. This area. That's, that's birds. And lots of them. And where we got birds, and if we can also see a uh, dolphin jumping in the same area, then we know we got a big bunch of tuna. So we're rigging for them right now to get my bait to them. This is the Raymarine E120 chart plotter. I'm sure you've used chart plotters before. And we use it hard. It's a good chart plotter. We even exceeded the limit for a thousand waypoints points a while ago and had to erase some. But what I really want to talk about is the depth sounder. We use the Airmar R99 transducer. Now if you don't know what an R99 transducer is, it's a transducer about two feet long and it weighs over 30 pounds. Just like a VHF radio has a stronger signal and you can operate with more gain with a larger antenna, the same holds true with a transducer. This is a big transducer and we can get excellent imaging even in deep, deep depths. We often bottom fish here for grouper in the 400 to 500, 600 foot range and we get a very clear signal at that depth. With a little practice, you will know where fish are in that range. Well, I hope the video was fun and informational, and I hope I convince you that this Albin 28 in this location, Panama, is a very interesting proposition. You can use it to catch marlin and tuna until you're sick of it. Then you can take her home. All the U.S. taxes are paid. I've never reflagged it here in Panama. Plus, I have photos of how we moved this boat and another one here from Florida on Super Servant. It's just way too easy. You can call me anytime, write me anytime, but I do hope we talk soon. Thank you.